Now it's time for you to get some experience of exploring an effect in detail. And so in this video, we're going to have a look at the pan slicer effect. Now I'm not going to tell you anything about how this thing sounds or how it works. That's going to be your job to figure it out. But what I want you to do is apply that effect, the pan slicer effect, to this sample, Loop Mika, which comes with Sonic Pi. I will just say that pan slicer is an example of what we call a stereo effect. And so for it to work well, it needs to be coming from an audio system that has a left speaker and a right speaker. So most computers and laptops have that kind of audio system, but if it doesn't, listening on a pair of headphones will probably be the way to realize right away how this is working and what's going on. Once you've had a listen a few times and you might have figured out what is going on with this pan slicer effect, it'll be time to jump into the help section and just read a little bit more about how this thing works and see if you are correct in your guesses. From there, you'll be able to choose a few parameters to play around with. And in particular, we're going to be playing around with the phase parameter. So it'll be worth having a try with some different phase lengths that are not the default setting that come with this particular effect. Okay, I think that's enough from me. You're ready to crack on with this now. So pause the video here and I will see you when you're done exploring. So are you able to figure it out? Let's first have a listen to this Loop Mika sample on its own. And then let's have a listen to it with this pan slicer effect applied. That sounds really different to me, particularly because I'm listening to the music on headphones. Instead of the music sounding dead straight ahead of me, it's jumping from left to right to left to right to left to right all the time. And that's exactly what this pan slicer effect does is it chops our sample up into lots of small pieces and puts, puts one on the left in terms of panning and then one on the right in terms of panning and then one on the left in terms of panning and one on the right in terms of panning. Chances are the help section can explain this better than I can. So it says slice the pan automatically from left to right using a variety of different control waves. Behave similarly to slicer and wobble effects but modifies stereo panning of sound in left and right speakers. As you can see, Pan Slicer has far more parameters or settings than Echo did, and all of these will be worth playing around with and getting a feel for what they do. But I said we'd focus here on this phase parameter. So what's going on here? Well, it, this is really how big each slice is going to be. And so the greater the phase, the bigger the chunks are going to be, and the smaller the phase, the smaller the chunks are going to be. Let's just dig in and have a play. So the default phase length for this effect is 0.25. So if we half that, we should be able to hear it jumping from left to right twice as fast. That's almost becoming kind of a distorted effect because it's jumping from left to right so quickly. And as we increase this value, we can start to hear more and more groups of beats being collected within each slice. And if we were to try a phase of one, we can actually hear each beat in either side of our headphones, which is kind of an interesting effect. We could even do a whole bar by choosing a phase of four. We'll hear four beats on the right and then four beats on the left. So there's hours of fun to be had with the pan slicer effect. Just dive in and have a play with effects in general and see what kind of weird, crazy, unusual sounds you can make. 